Although often overshadowed by its predecessor, the B-29, the B-50 is a noteworthy aircraft in its own right. Today, we will delve into its development, design, operational history, and different models. The development of the B-50 Superfortress began during World War II, when Boeing sought to improve on the design of the B-29 Superfortress. While the B-29 and B-50 look strikingly similar, don't be deceived. The B-50 was essentially an upgraded version of the B-29, built with sturdier materials, improved engines, and design modifications. Officially, the design was greenlit in 1944 and originally labeled the B-29D. However, the sheer amount of changes prompted the reclassification to B-50 in 1947. The B-50 featured several design improvements over the B-29. The most notable changes included the more powerful Pratt and Whitney R4360 radial engines, a taller tail fin for better stability, and strengthened redesigned wings. It also had upgraded avionics and a larger fuel capacity, which extended its range. Now, let's delve deeper into the operational history of the B-50, which takes us through the Cold War, Korea, and even into the Space Age. The B-50 entered service in 1947 with the United States Air Force becoming the mainstay of its bomber fleet in the early Cold War years. Its range, speed, and payload capacity made it an essential part of the U.S. strategic bombing force. One of the most noteworthy operations of the B-50 was the Lucky Lady 2 mission. In February 1949, this B-50A under the command of Captain James Gallagher completed the first non-stop circumnavigation of the globe. Refueled in mid-air by KB-29M tankers, Lucky Lady 2 flew 23,452 miles in 94 hours and one minute. This mission demonstrated the effectiveness of mid-air refueling and cemented the concept of global reach for the USAF's strategic bomber force. Interestingly, unlike its predecessor the B-29, the B-50 did not see significant action during the Korean War. At the time of the conflict, the B-50 was one of the USAF's primary strategic bombers and was kept stateside as a part of the Strategic Air Command's nuclear deterrent force. However, derivatives of the B-50, such as the KB-50 and KB-29, served in tanker roles during the Korean War, providing aerial refueling to extend the range and endurance of other aircraft. Hey there! I just wanted to take a moment to thank you for watching and supporting this channel. You're amazing! I'd like to introduce you to Super Thanks. It's like a virtual tip jar allowing you to support content you love, right here on YouTube. Your super thanks donation not only helps me create more awesome content, but also gets highlighted in the comment section. Just click on the thanks button below this video and leave a small tip in your local currency. Let's grow together and thank you for being a super supporter. Now back to the video. B-50s also had significant non-combat roles. The WB-50s served as weather reconnaissance aircraft well into the 1960s. Meanwhile, the RB-50s performed photo reconnaissance, capturing valuable intelligence throughout the Cold War. A particularly unique application of the B-50 was as a mothership for experimental aircraft. In fact, the B-50 Super Fortress was responsible for air launching the first aircraft to break the sound barrier, the Bell X-1, with Chuck Yeager at the controls. Over time, the jet age began to eclipse the B-50. They were gradually replaced by the all-jet B-47 and B-52. However, even as their bombing role diminished, the B-50s continued to serve in various auxiliary roles. They were used for air-sea rescue, electronic intelligence gathering, and even as engine test beds. By the late 1960s, the B-50 was mostly retired from operational service, but its legacy didn't end there. Many B-50s found a second life as aerial tankers, while others were adapted for civilian use or preserved in museums. From breaking records to wartime service and weather reconnaissance, the B-50 Superfortress played a multitude of roles throughout its operational life. Its story is a testament to the versatility and adaptability of this remarkable aircraft. Throughout its production run, several models of the B-50 were developed, each for a specific role. The B-50A, which featured improved engines and increased fuel capacity, was the model used for the famous Lucky Lady 2 flight. The B-50B was an upgraded version with better bombing equipment, but only five of these were built. The B-50D was the most produced model, with 222 units. This variant had extra fuel tanks in the wings and was modified for mid-air refueling, 
Additionally, several B-50s were converted into weather reconnaissance and photo reconnaissance variants. These aircraft served in these roles for many years, often outliving their counterparts in the bombing role. Interestingly, the B-50 was not widely exported. Due to its strategic role and high-tech capabilities, the B-50 remained a uniquely American asset.